What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to walk you through how to make a resin and seashell riverboard with some stainless steel handles. Check it out. And guys, before we even start this video, I am going to be doing a Q&A soon, so if you have any questions for me, put them down in the comments below and I'll try and answer them in the upcoming Q&A. Thanks. So I've laminated together this big block of hard maple, of a bunch of different strips of uh, hard maple, and it's about 8 inches by 15 inches, and it's a little over an inch thick. So this is going to be our blank that we can route out our little river in. I like to use maple, but you could use any wood you wanted. Maple is nice because the grain's really straight. It's a nice light color, so it doesn't distract from the, uh, the actual river. So now that you've got your blank, you're going to have to make a template for the router to run along to create the river pattern. And you want your template to be as perfect as possible because that's what your river's going to look like. So I'm going to take this piece of scrap cherry here and cut it to the same length as my blank. I am now going to draw on my piece of cherry the pattern that I want, and I'm going to cut that out on the bandsaw. So I've kind of just started to sketch out what I wanted to do, and now I'm going to go back with a sharpie and just kind of make two big bold lines that I can cut along. And you really only need to make one black line that you're going to need to cut along, and I'll show you why in a second. So all you're going to need is just one side of the piece that you cut out, and since the bandsaw leaves a really jagged cut, you're going to want to use a belt sander, clean up all these curves, and then you'll be ready to lay it out on your piece of wood and cut it out with a router. So now you're going to want to lay out on your blank where you want your river to be. So you're going to want to slide this back and forth, clamp it down, and draw a line. And then you're going to want to move it a little bit and then draw another line. And that will give you your two sides of your river. Then you're going to want to position your blank and clamp it down in the spot where your router is going to cut along one side. Got my river all marked out on my blank. Now I'm going to set my template up there and then adjust my template to the space where the router will cut just along one of these edges. Now you can see that with my template clamped down, my router is going to run along this the template and it's going to cut out my river. And with that you can see that my first groove is cut. I need to lower my depth a little bit and not take off so much in one bite, but my first one's cut. Now we're just going to keep going down to our desired depth, and then we'll move this, the, the template and we'll cut the other side. So I'm going for a river depth of 5 eighths of an inch, which is half the thickness of my material. And put it in the right spot so that way we'll cut the bottom side of the river. So then I just removed the template and hogged out all the material that was left in the middle. So I just plugged in my hot glue gun, and while that is warming up, I'm going to cut some pieces of plexiglass to put on the ends here so that way the epoxy doesn't just leak out. So I just went ahead and made a mold around the entire thing, since we are going to be coating the entire thing with uh, a clear resin after we pour our blue resin for the river. Alright guys, so we got all of our shells in there, and I've got them in the order that I want, and we are going to mix up some resin. So I marked on my cups how high I want to go. We're going to mix it up, add a little bit of blue food coloring, not too much, we want it to be light water, and we're going to pour it in there. So now we're just going to take a blowtorch and gently go over the entire thing to pop all the air bubbles. Alright, so I'm here in the basement right now, and that's just simply because it is about 20 degrees outside, nothing is going to dry. 
So I brought this into the basement for the final pour over the top. And we're going to be using a food safe resin for that. So let's just mix that up. We'll pour it over the top, let that cure, then we'll finish it up. I did make sure to use a food safe resin for the top as I said before since this is going to be used as a serving board and will be in contact with cheese and crackers and stuff like that. So back in the shop I'm going to take this mold off and we're going to clean up all the edges. And now that I've got all my edges nice and square I'm going to use a router with a round over bit and round over all the edges. <laughs> Now I just used my round over bit, rounded over all the edges, and I used my sander to sand the back ends and sides. Now we're going to be using a polyurethane, a water-based food safe polyurethane, to finish everything except the top. So I just applied a quick coat of water-based poly onto the back and sides of this thing, and now we're just going to put some handles on. And so guys, that about wraps it up. Thanks so much for watching. One of my videos just got to 30,000 views, which is crazy. I can't, I can't even like wrap my mind around that. So thank you so much for all the support. If you want to see more, follow me on Instagram, Seth's Custom Creations. I'll put the name on screen. Bye, guys.